Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to hop on and start filming the process of fixing the strap on this vintage Gucci accessories collection bag. But before I get started, I do want to say thank you to those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I put out a lot of videos about current temperature signing handbags like Coach Michael Kors, Fossil, Longchamp, as well as some leg items like Gucci, Burberry, and Goyard. And if you end up liking this video, please do give me a thumbs up down below. So this is a vintage Gucci accessories collection crossbody that I purchased on Poshmark for around $140. I've spent a fair bit of time cleaning out the interior so that it no longer has that like flaking color that vintage Gucci accessories collection bags tend to have. Um, but one thing I noticed recently is that uh, the strap is starting to fall apart. And I think this is partially my fault. I never really thought about uh, conditioning the strap because I didn't really know much about how to condition pigskin leather, which is what this is. So I didn't, you know, think about the fact that this is still leather and it still does need to be conditioned in order to remain durable. So the strap is basically falling apart right here. Um, so I'm going to just start kind of the process of trying to fix it. So I'm going to do, I think, two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, try to reconstruct or like make reinforce this broken leather by just sticking some leather glue inside all of those little cracks and trying to get it to like at least lay flat and not be all bendy. Uh, and the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just reinforce it with a piece of leather. This is just a piece of like craft leather, very thin leather that I got from Michael's, um, which is a craft store in the U.S. in case you don't know that. Um, so I'm just going to cut it to size and I'm going to just reinforce the strap like that. Now this is not going to look seamless, this is not going to look perfect by any means, um, but I didn't want to get this repaired officially by like a cobbler or anything uh, for two reasons. One, I don't really want to cut the strap um, because it is the original strap and if I do want to sell this at some point, I do want um, the strap to kind of remain as true to what it was as possible. So I wanted to basically do things that were reversible. So if I sew this on, I can easily kind of cut those stitches open and take it out without uh, like fully removing the strap on the bag. And then the second reason I didn't want to replace the strap because I could just, you know, buy a strap, a leather strap off Amazon, even if it's not pigskin leather, it would be calf leather, it would be something relatively similar, um, is because it's just like really hard to match the color of this bag. Uh, you know, it's, I have not been able to find like a quick way to get a kind of like faded brown <laughs> strap on Amazon or Etsy or anything like that. So I just thought it would be really difficult to replace this and make it look kind of seamless, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm just going to start by putting a little bit of leather glue on a piece of parchment paper. Um, and like, just to be super clear, I'm totally winging this. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've never repaired a bag like this before, so it's possible that this is all going to go horribly wrong. Um, I believe my husband got this off of Amazon. I don't. I did not buy this, and it looks like I probably need to shake it. Now let's try. Yeah, there you go. You have a nice, like, thick glue consistency. So I'm just going to take a toothpick because I feel like I need kind of a fine edge, and I am going to just try to start putting glue in these little cracks. Um, this is not, again, not going to be perfect, um, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of strength here so that when I do reinforce it with the actual leather and actual stitching, it there's something that it can hold on to. You know, the other hope is that by doing this, maybe it'll just look so decent and feel so strong that I won't have to go through the process of stitching uh, everything together, but that's probably not going to be the case. Okay, so I have all the leather glue in there, so I'm just going to hold it for a second so that it kind of sits flat. Um, so that's already looking a lot better. Um, so while I'm holding this, just kind of as an aside, like I said, you can buy leather, uh, craft, ooh, no, craft leather like this at uh, Michael's or any kind of craft store, but you can also um, try to look for um, leather furniture stores online because places that sell like kind of higher end, custom designed sofas will send you little samples of their leather which is actually fantastic um you know you get these little samples and all i really need here is a very small piece just to kind of cover the part that i'm trying to reinforce um so that would work really well and would be kind of a way to get free leather to repair stuff like this okay so i think um what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put something heavy on top of here and let it dry overnight 
basically just something to hold it pressed down so that it will dry. Um, and then I will come back and think about putting um, the little leather piece on there to reinforce the hole. One thing I can do while this is drying is cut this little leather strip to the right size. Uh, so I want it to be the same width as my strap. So I just have a quilting ruler here and the strap looks like it is just under three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm gonna try to cut this also three quarters of an inch, placing my ruler there. So it's lined up, I think, to three quarters of an inch. I have a rotary cutter. I'm just gonna snip that. Got a nice clean edge. So the idea is that I'm just gonna place this on top of here. Once it is dry, I'll stitch it up and then that will be how those holes are reinforced. Um, but I can remove it if I don't, if, you know, if I eventually want to sell this bag or want, you know, a better looking outcome. Um, but I think this is going to be a great kind of intermediate, really quick fix. Um, and this is what the uh, strap looks like after it has been drying for a couple hours. You can see that the... Um, there's less damage, like obvious damage, because I was able to glue some of the kind of finish and top back to it, but it still does have that crack. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this strip of leather that I cut and I'm going to apply it to the back of the strap here. Now this might seem counterintuitive because the actual cracking and like major damage is on this side, but because this is not a very kind of aesthetically pleasing fix that I'm implementing, I want to put it on the back just so that fewer people can see it, even though it will reinforce. Uh, hopefully it won't be super noticeable when I'm actually wearing the back. Basically what I want to do is just reinforce these holes. Um, I'm not, like now that I'm looking at it, I'm not sure if I really want to reinforce all three since I really only use the bottom most hole. So maybe I will cut this to be smaller. Um, so now I have a much smaller piece of leather and which side was front? This side is the front. So now I can really just kind of reinforce that one little hole on the strap. So to get this started, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue on the back of this leather. Um, now you might have remembered that I said that I wanted this to be, um, you know, I wanted to be able to undo this if I wanted to sell the bag. Um, but I think that the glue has dried clear enough that I feel fairly confident that this will come, like if I wanted to peel it off and un, unstitch it, it would look pretty okay. Um, given the fact that it's already had a damaged part of the bag, I'm not sure that it would be that big of a difference um, in terms of like the quality. So I'm just applying some glue and I'm gonna just let this sit again for a while to dry. And then once that's dry, then I will stitch it just so it's easier to kind of hold and manipulate so it doesn't keep like falling all over the place. Okay, so that's been drying for a couple minutes and it seems relatively dry. So now I'm just gonna take a large hand sewing needle. I'm gonna take some of this waxed thread. I got all of these like leather crafting type supplies off Amazon so I can link them down below. Um, but I'm going to just thread the needle and I'm gonna try to do a saddle stitch. So I'm just gonna kind of try to get the thread in there to kind of create a type of knot. Uh, let me just cut this thread. Okay, I'm just giving myself a comfortable amount. It's probably way too much, but I'd rather have too much than too little. And then I'll take another needle. Um, this is fine. And I will just do the same on the other end of the thread. Okay. So now we have the drying, I guess, um, piece of leather. And you'll notice, like, it's obviously not perfect in terms of the sizing. There's a little bit of overhang there, so I can trim that once I'm done. Um, but I'm just going to use the existing stitching holes, essentially, and try to poke through with just the needle, which is not typically how I would stitch leather. I would use, typically use, like, a, an awl or, like, a, what are they called? Like, a piercing fork. Um, but this is a unique kind of situation. Um, so one thing I do usually do 
when stitching leather is I take a piece of like old leather that I kind of messed up on and I use that to hold the needle and push it through just to save my fingers from being like stabbed over and over. The reason I'm not using an awl or like a trying to pierce this is because I don't want to create new holes in the strap which might be not working well. Um, this is very much improvisation so let's see. I think I got it through. Alright, so we got one stitch through. It's not the prettiest, but it'll have to do. So now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably going to be really hard to match these stitches and make sure that things like line up on the other side, because like I said, I don't want to create new holes in the existing strap. Um, so eyeballing it is probably not going to work very well. Uh, so one thing I might do is try to measure the size of the existing stitches. So it looks like there may be, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch long. Um, so I could come onto this, um, this leather and try to pierce a bunch of holes that are kind of an eighth of an inch apart from each other and maybe that will make this process a lot easier. Um, so given that, I'm going to take this thread out And I'm going to remove uh, this piece of leather. Not too bad. And I'm going to cut, I'll just throw this away, and I'll cut a new piece. Maybe I'll make it a little bit longer so I can cover both of those holes. So I will do a two inch sliver. So now I'm going to take all and I'm just going to start stitching hole or creating holes. And so there you have one hole. I think you can see it. And then I'm going to just try to kind of eyeball an eighth of an inch away. Hopefully this works better. Okay, so I have a bunch of holes you can see, so I'll just keep going. I'll just, uh, I'm going to widen the holes just so I can actually see it. There we go. And I'm just going to keep poking holes like that. Okay, so I've finished punching holes in the leather. You can see it better on the more sweetie side of the leather. So now I'm going to go ahead and again take the glue and then I'm going to, oops, to glue this again to the back side. This is the back side. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because I want to line up the stitching holes I have with the actual stitching that exists on the strap. Um, I guess it's kind of easy to see, so that's not too bad. So I'm just going to do my best. And I probably just got a bunch of glue on my cutting mat, but that's okay. So I'm just going to press this down and then I will let that dry for a little bit. Okay, so I've re-threaded um, both of my needles and I um, can see the holes a little bit on this side. So I'm just going to try to get my needle into one of those stitching holes. Again, taking the piece of leather to try to protect my finger. And then on the other side, I'm trying to go into a hole that's already created in the strap so that I don't create new holes. And I have successfully done that. Um, now I'm going to try to do that again. Maybe it'll be easier from this side. So I'm going to take my needle, line it up with an existing stitching hole, and try to push it through, trying to hit one of the holes I stitched on this side, which maybe I did, maybe I didn't, I'm not sure. And I got it through. And I'm just going to try to keep these a little bit even. Uh, the whole point of a saddle stitch is then you go back in to the hole that you just created to finish the stitch. I should say I would not have tried this on a brand new bag or a bag 
even that I thought I might sell because there's a chance I'm damaging the strap even more right now. So I don't want you to think this is a great idea to do with like your $2,000 Louis Vuitton bag that you just got new from the boutique. Um, but I think it will work for a kind of quick fix for this bag since I don't ever plan on selling it and because I got it for a relatively um, affordable price. So just going to try to do that again. So I've lined up my needle with a hole that I've punched and I'm trying to go, yep, through between those stitches on that side and I was able to. So um, in the interest of not making you watch me stitch this over and over, uh, I'm going to do this off camera, but essentially what I'm going to try to do is just keep stitching this all around. Um, and then maybe I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of stitching on this side. Obviously, I'm not going to win any prizes for my neat stitching, but it is um, in the back here reinforcing that hole. Uh, one thing you might have noticed is I started too low, so I'm not reinforcing that second hole, even though that was my intention. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that this stitch, the last stitch I made, goes over the top of the edge of this leather, whereas when I started I didn't do that and I wish I had. Um, so the last thing is I'm going to just take the stitch on this side and bring it back over here. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to burn off the edges and I'm a little bit more comfortable burning the edges to uh, on the side that has the leather that I can remove versus accidentally burning a hole through. Um, the bag strap itself, so I'm just going to cut the threads, and then I'm just going to take a lighter and burn those threads, and burn those threads, being very careful not to burn the bag itself. Um, I'm going to try to just pull that one over and burn it a little bit more. I don't want to, I'm not sure what the threads of the bag are made out of, so I don't want to catch them on fire. Okay, so that's one side, and one thing you'll see is that I started trimming off this excess with a kind of exacto knife thing, um, so I'm going to try to do that to make it look neater on this side. Um, I mean, you, you can see that the stitching doesn't kind of um, blend in perfectly, but I think it is subtle enough that from maybe far away you wouldn't be able to tell that it's <laughs> kind of a handmade solution. So I'm getting ready to start on the other side of stitching and so just to show you what I mean by wanting that stitch to kind of overlap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here which is right off the edge of the new piece of leather and I'm going to go in there. Um, okay, And then I'm going to start going through on this side, trying to match up with the hole that I already pierced. This is tough. <laughs> Maybe I'll start on this side. That probably makes more sense because I don't need to push as hard. And now I'm aiming to go through that next stitch hole. Pretty much got it. And you can see there that the stitch kind of hangs off and keeps the piece of leather from kind of flapping around. Okay, so I finished stitching this second side. And again, um, not the neatest of stitching, but it will work for what I'm hoping to do, which is just reinforce the strap. One of the things I said when I started this video was I was hoping to do a repair that would be that could be something I could undo if I wanted to sell this bag, something that's not... Um, going to damage the bag in any way and I think that now that I've done this I do realize that I am kind of damaging the strap more by sewing through it. You can see I've created kind of a bunch of larger holes here that I think have made, you know, if I took this leather bit off on the back it would make the strap even less structurally sound than before. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and cut this string off again. And I remember, or I realized that for my other stitches, I did not knot the stitch, which is unfortunate. I can't go in and undo that because um, obviously I've cut off all of the extra string. Sorry about that. I think my camera randomly stopped filming. So I just cut the excess off and I'm just going to burn the ends of this wax. Oh, and it popped open, but hopefully it'll just... 
um, kind of <laughs> remain secure. Um, so you'll notice that I, you know, trimmed the edges so it looks relatively neat on this side for an amateur kind of fix. So the last thing I want to do is I'm just going to take my awl and I'm going to stab a hole through where the last, um, the last hole used to be. And I have a nice, well, not nice, but I have a decent looking hole. Um, and so that should be good enough to kind of be structurally sound enough to continue to use this bag now. Again, this is not a repair that I would ever like sell to anyone or, you know, that you would ever want to do on a bag that is, uh, you know, relatively expensive. But I think for this purse, it works well. So I'm just going to show you the final look. Um, just pop in that. Maybe this hole is not big enough. Okay. So now we have a, a hopefully nice clean hole there. There you go. Obviously, I don't have a nice clean hole punch that you might have if you tend to make your belts bigger or something like that, because that could make that process a lot easier and cleaner of a solution. Um, but now, this is the final product. Um, so you can see on this side, it is not, you know, it's not perfect, um, but I think from far away, nobody would be able to tell. And on this side, it's almost kind of hidden a little bit. Um, it's not perfect, but a lot of that is hidden kind of behind the buckle and out of sight. Um, so this is now, I think, a more structurally sound usable bag now that I've reinforced this gaping hole here. And I'm actually pretty pleased with the outcome. I thought this was going to be a disaster. Um, so I think that it worked decently well. And now I can actually continue to use this bag because I really do like this bag. Um, and I was really bummed when I found that hole. So like I said, all of the um, products that I've used, I will try to link them down in the description box. But otherwise, um, this is how I repaired this, this vintage Gucci accessories collection bag. So if you have a bag, you know, from your mom or your grandma that, you know, is not something that you feel comfortable giving to a cobbler and also not something that you want to pay a ton of money to repair, um, this could be a way to make it usable again. So thanks guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I will see you next time. Bye.